Do you know if your prayers are effective? Well, in today's morning meds, we'll use Nehemiah's awesome prayer as a guide to make sure that our communications with God are effective. Are you ready? Let's go. Good morning. Good morning and welcome back to Morning Meds where we meditate on God's word to tackle everyday issues that we face as Christians. And if you like what you see on Morning Meds, be sure to click the like button, share, as well as subscribe so that we can face it together with the help of God. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel, thy servants. And confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou, hast, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather from thence, gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee thy servant this day and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. Now that we've had our scripture, we'll have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. We thank you for being who you are and being God all by yourself. We ask you, God, to forgive us for the wrong that we've done, said, and thought, God. We ask you, Lord, to prepare our hearts to receive your word and so that we can make a choice, God. You give us free will, God, so we ask you, Lord, to just allow your word to be so clear that we can only say yes or no in this moment, God, and in our lives. We ask you, Lord, to allow your word to take root in our heart. We love you for all that you've done, and we praise your righteous name for your amazing power. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we begin Nehemiah chapter one with Nehemiah getting word that Jerusalem is yet again in shambles, physically and spiritually. They have no wall of protection. And back in that time, the wall was one of the most important things in the city, in a city of that time. It meant that they were secure. They had protection from enemies. They had a place where they could handle business. They were able to uh, handle their commerce and other things that were governmental were handled at the city gates. So a wall meant that the city was thriving and that all was well. Also, Jerusalem was where God, where God's people were. These are the children of Israel. This is a remnant. This is a piece of them. He's gathered them back together and they're back in Jerusalem, but they have no wall. So when Nehemiah hears this, he's very grieved by it and he mourns for a certain amount of days. And that's where we come in at verse four. <laughs> All right, so now that we have our context and we know where we are, we know the mood, okay? So the mood is that Nehemiah is not okay, all right? He is very concerned. So that's the number one thing that you must have in order for your prayer to be effective is true concern. If Nehemiah didn't really care about those people back in Jerusalem, why would he be upset? Why would that grieve him so much that he would mourn and fast and pray to even figure out or even see what God would want to happen in that way? 
Okay, that's number one. You must have concern. Number two, you must be willing to be a part of the solution. Okay, when Nehemiah prayed for those people, he wasn't just like, Lord, help them people. I'm so sad. He wasn't just sitting there chilling in the king's palace like, oh, I'm so sorry that that happened to them, but I'm going to stay right here where I am. He did not say that. He was willing to be a part of the solution. That's number two. The first one is concern. The second one is you must be willing to be a part of the solution. Now that we've discussed the two necessary attributes that we have to have in our prayers in the background, now let's talk about the actual things that Nehemiah used inside of his prayer in order for his prayer to be effective. And the first thing that we see is exaltation. Nehemiah does not hesitate to let God know that he knows who God is. Nehemiah is a descendant of the children of Israel. So he has heard of God's mighty acts throughout his life. He knows who he is. No matter where he, where he is in his life, he knows that the God of his fathers and their fathers, he knows that he's the God of promises. He's the great and terrible. He does not hesitate to let God know, hey, I know who you are. Let's go ahead and talk about that. All right. So that's the thing that we definitely must have in our prayers is exaltation and praise. The only way you can exalt God is if you know things about him. If you know attributes about God in, uh, in and of your own life, you can say those things. But even if you don't know specifically and personally just yet the mighty acts of God, call those things that his word already says about him. These things are the truth as God has inspired the writers of the Bible to say. OK, so this is the truth of God. He is the great and terrible. He is the covenant keeper. He does not lie. He is sovereign. He's a great God. Don't hesitate to let God know who he is in your life. The next thing that Nehemiah's prayer definitely has is petition. He humbles himself. He refers to himself as a servant. As a matter of fact, throughout this scripture, Nehemiah says the word servant or derivative of that word eight times. He wants God to know I'm for you. I work for you. I go for you. I live for you. I am your servant. I have not forgotten where you have brought me from. You have placed me here. I am for you. So that's the first, that's the second thing that Nehemiah's prayer has obviously is his petition, his ask of God to hear him in humility and in servitude to who God is. The next thing that Nehemiah exhibits in his prayer is confession. He lays it all out there. He's like, my, I messed up. My father's house is messed up. We have been jacked up, God. We have not done what you said. You've made covenants and you've been keeping them. We've made the covenant and we haven't been keeping them. Okay, we know that we haven't been any good. So that's the next thing that your prayer must have in order to be effective is true confession. Let God know that you agree that what you have done or are doing is not the right thing. Even if you are weak in your faith to where you still feel like you're doing those things, but it's a struggle for you to continue on. Let God know that that is a struggle. Do not withhold your true confession from God. Let him know that you ain't nothing without him. After Nehemiah lays it all bare and he lays it all, the, all on the line with his confession, he goes right into reminding God of who he is. In, in your Bible, it may be set off by quotations, but in my Bible, it's underlined. The author or whoever wrote this, the editor actually underlined this what Nehemiah has said, because it is the clear quotation of God. These are the words that God spoke through Moses. Clearly, if you transgress, I will scatter you. But if you repent and do what you're supposed to do, according to my word, I will bring you back together. And all Nehemiah is saying, hey, God, I'm just reminding you of what you already promised me anyway. When you go to your parents, you say, mom, you said if I do check, 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 check and check, you would do this. The only reason your parent would not still do that is if they were weak on their word. God is not that type of parent. He is not weak on his word. So if he said it, he will do it. And that's the, those are the things that we should be recalling into prayer are the promises that he's already given us. We are not supposed to be praying to God for a million dollars and a good man, okay? The last thing that Nehemiah's prayer gives us 
to make our prayers more effective is specificity, okay? He was specific. Nehemiah asked specifically for favor with King Artaxerxes. I am his cupbearer. Give me favor. I, You know what I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask for permission to, to go to rebuild Jerusalem. I need you to um, soften his heart and prepare his mind to allow me to do what you already know I need to do anyway. That is what Nehemiah shows us. Be specific. Why? What? When you say bless mom, bless dad, what exactly do you need? Do they need more peace? Do they need more love? Do they need more grace? What do they need? You want God to bless your people bless your prayers specifically. Don't waste time with empty asking. Say exactly what it is. God is so clear and so intelligent and so plain and so like cutthroat that you don't have to give him bells and whistles. I know what we're used to. We're used to having to dress it up and make it look really good and sound really good. It does not have to. God is, he's clear. He's concise. His character is true. So as long as you are true, clear, and concise, God will hear you. He will hear you and he will understand what you need from him. Now, thankfully, Jesus is also making intercession for us. And because Jesus is uh, making intercession for us, that brings us to our very last part of prayer that we must have that is not involved in Nehemiah because he is a, a, a child of, um, he's an Israelite. He is an Old Testament believer. Okay. So we must pray in Jesus name. And we find that proof in John 14 and 13, where it says, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The clear, 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 clear part of that is that the Father may be glorified. He will be glorified in the Son, Jesus, that he sent. That was important for him. That is what, that was his ultimate sacrifice to give us his only begotten Son for our sins so that we wouldn't have to sacrifice and we wouldn't have to abide by a strict set of laws that we weren't able to follow anyway. Okay. So make sure that you are praying and ending your prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Otherwise you, Christianity is not your true profession. <laughs> In order to apply this information to our lives, I would like to read the excerpt from Arthur Stilley that tells us what prayer looks like to God. Prayer is seen on two levels, individual and corporate. All our prayers accumulate at God's throne in heaven until they reach their proper proportion. And then he acts in accordance with his will to bless or to judge or to hear or to save or any number of his perfect acts. The more you pray, the brighter, bigger, and more pleasing the flame grows in the presence of God. Isn't that beautiful? That was so encouraging to me to know that the more that I'm praying, the more that something concerns me and is deep on my heart, the more that it grows and grows brighter and more pleasing to God. He will act in his will, in his time, he will act. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your holy name. You are so good and so worthy and your spirit is true. Your word is alive and it's active. And we know that, God, because it gets us out of bed and it causes us to hope. We thank you so much for that, God. And we ask you, Lord, to receive us, God. We know that we don't do everything right. We are not perfect. We're not even the best example, God. So we ask you, Lord, to just keep us and allow your glory, allow you to be glorified through your son, Jesus, because he is who covers. He is who is making intercession for us. And we thank you, God, for that sacrifice that you allow for us to receive. Thank you, Father. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Bless our efforts in Jesus' name. We only want to be right for you. We only want to be great for you. We only want to give glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.